Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the PMP Ares, which is uh, in some ways kind of stridery, and it also looks like the bonefish enemy that attacks you in one of the Super Mario Bros. games. I can't remember which one it is, um, but it's cool, and it's CPM S90V and Titanium. These knives are still av uh, available at uh, various retailers. I'll try and link them right down below so you guys can check them out. The price isn't terrible. Uh, thanks so much to PMP for sending this knife in for review. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and uh, get a measurement of this knife. Overall length of the Aries coming in at, I mean, it's got this funky backspacer that looks like it could be like a flathead screwdriver or, or scraper. I, I think you'd have trouble using it that way, and I'll show why here in a little bit, but I'm going to say it's eight and a quarter to the butt of the knife. If for some reason, you really want it measured all the way to the end of the backspacer. We're looking at about eight and a half. Blade length is actually the base of the frame is 3.75 inches. The cutting edge is 3.65. Quite a bit of blade on this guy. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the uh, Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. It's a pretty big knife, even if not lengthwise, just presence-wise. Um, up, uh, up against the Abebabab, up against the uh, Demco 8020.5. There we go. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? There we go. And then uh, last but not least, let's do the uh, Benchmade Bugout and the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. How's the action? It's actually pretty good. I think there's quite a bit of blade assisting it, but it will fall shut. I, the best thing about this, about the action here, is not the fall shuttiness because I, again, I think that this is easily done, right? It's just, it's a heavy blade, reasonably heavy. It's the position of this little opening hole here. And while they probably could have scalloped slightly better in this area and in this area, honestly, access to it is great and it's organic. I think a lot of companies just automatically push it as far back as possible and they're like, yeah, just figure it out. But my middle finger naturally lands down here. So it's finding that my finger is automatically finding the hole without any effort or thought. Um, but it does sort of organically get, you know, right there. It gets right in there. <laughs> it's, it's nice, right? It feels nice. I'm trying desperately to escape this innuendo, and I just can't. Like every, every path I choose, right? It's like I'm reading one of those books where you, at the end of the page, it's like make a choice, and then you skip to the page where you made the choice, and it's like, oh, you know, you drowned in a pool full of uh, strawberry jam or something like that. I'm like, oh, dang it. I got to go back to where I didn't die. <sighs> it's easy to deploy, right? There. I'm sure the pieces are there to make a joke out of that too, but what are you going to do? It's in, it's, uh, it's fine. Let's do it. Go ahead and, uh, do carry profile, uh, thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, it's actually, yeah, sorry. I bumped the camera there. Maybe about the same. These chamfer up and the, it's hard to say what the flattest zone is. So you're going to feel peak thickness. Oh boy. Uh, length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. It's, it's definitely a little longer than both. And it's also, I mean, in terms of like max height, eh, it's not quite as tall as the Para 3. You're probably still going to notice this thing in the pocket compared to your average pocket knife. If you carry larger knives in general, then this might, you might not be that big of a deal to you. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. We have a T8 pivot. These are all T6 screws in the body and the pocket clip, which is eh, it's kind of a bummer, but okay. You technically can take off the, um, <laughs> the studs here, the stops. I mean, I wouldn't because they are the actual stops, right? But you'll need some sort of tri-wing apparatus to get in there. 
whatever. This should be easy to take apart. Simple sandwich construction titanium frame lock. As long as you have the right tools for the job and a place to put your hardware, you should be good to go. Let's go ahead and weigh it. We are looking at titanium and CPM S90V, uh, which is great. The weight on this, oh, is there milling? There is. I don't know why that surprises me. A little, a little bit of milling for weight reduction. Weight's coming in at 5.47 ounces, which is about the same weight that a full titanium Hinderer XM18 three and a half inch would weigh, which is actually a little bit smaller. So, eh, I mean, the balance isn't perfect. Your balance is, at, you know what? The balance actually is really nice. It's right behind the pivot, which means holding it in its natural grip or especially choked up is gonna result in the knife feeling much lighter than the actual weight. Still a five and a half, uh, five, five and a half ounce object. So you're gonna have to compare that with everything else you've been carrying. Um, let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. I would say, you know, as far as like the average knife goes. It's a little bigger, a little heavier than the average knife. Uh, blade stock thickness on this guy is coming in at 155 thousandths, so on the thicker side as well. Let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes here. Does this not look like some sort of fish fossil? Like you, it looks like something that you would find in a museum that was like, you know, this was some old, some ancient predator, right? And now all we have left are the, are the bones. Um, that's what it looks like to me. It looks very much like a prehistoric fish. I think that's fine though. I actually kind of like the texture pattern here. Uh, we might call this river rock, right? Or fish ribs. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> it's nice though. I can't say that it's really offering much traction. I think it's just pleasant to the touch, right? Uh, may maybe a little bit. Uh, ergonomically, it's all right. There's a nice choke up spot. This is actually pretty comfortable to hang on to. There are parts of this knife that remind me of the Spider Coast Shaman, uh, parts that remind me of the uh, Strider. Um, uh, why am I? <laughs> the Strider SNG or SMF? I don't know why I'm blanking on that. Um, the edges are nicely knocked down, and there really are no hot spots. Even the pocket clip, which is definitely weird, like they just, like, I don't know if like the guy, you know, using the machine was just like taking all the controls and just, I know it's not really how this works, but he's just like, ah, you know, and the thing was like, Nyer! and cut out this really weird shit. Like, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the pocket clip here, right? It's a caveman club shaped, but you know, it's knocked down and doesn't, it's not going to cause much of an ergonomic issue. What's weird is that what, keeps it in the pocket are two little nubs. I have never seen that before. That is so weird. It's it's pinchy. That creates a situation that's a lot like the ball bearing clips on some of those Microtech knives that they insist is great and in my experience is actually really crappy. I, I don't like how pinchy it is. This is a little pinchy. It's not quite that bad, but why not just a milled lump underneath it, right? It's also got kind of the raised pillars which just, there's just a lot of stuff sticking up out of the back of your pocket, right? Like, look at all this. Jeez, it's just a lot, right? It's not quite shallow carry. It's just like, God, it's just weird. Like a lot of crags and spires and crap just coming up out of your pocket. It's just, I don't know. That's not my favorite thing. If you like that, if you're big on like having, you know, freaking uncut quartz sticking out of your pocket. That's what it looks like to me, except it's gray. Quartz isn't gray. Shut up. Um, if you like that, then that's the best thing I compare it to, right? But I, I don't really like it so much. Really, it's just nice. It, it's, it's, it's not something that looks like it would be ergonomic or comfortable in any way, but it, it really is. This choke up position is really, really nice. There's no, this area back here is kind of like meh, because they didn't do the sharpening toil right? And it didn't come out. There's a few different ways to do this where it just comes out like this comes down and the edge starts down here, but they just sort of ran it into this area right there. So it's not the best looking thing in the whole world, but it's, it's fine. It's, I mean, it's not the worst thing. It's just kind of, that area is always a little bit tricky when they do it like this. Choking up and the zone that complements your index finger, which is back here where the jimping is, this is all really nice. 
uh, very, very nice. And, and uh, again, you know, the um, area on the inside of the hole uh, is nicely knocked down. So just once again, catching myself in the innuendo trap, the unintentional innuendo trap. We have a drop point blade with an enormous flat that carries out to about, I don't know, 70% the length of the blade, big swedge, right? Not a lot of room to drop down to a thin cutting edge. The, the final cutting edge is a little thick, but it will still slice and cut. In fact, if I demonstrate here, I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Paper cut test doesn't really prove anything because it, it depends on what you're cutting through. And obviously if you know how to reprofile or touch up your edge and you do it a different way, then it changes the cutting geometry. But the actual cutting geometry out of the factory is really not as bad as I thought. There's not much lifting on the edges of the paper, so it's, it is doing more slicing than just dividing or tearing of the paper. So it's okay. It just feels a little bit thick uh, down at the edge, but fine. There's got uh, It's got a little bit of a tip here. Uh, CPM S90V, I used to complain a lot. I used to say it should be so much higher, and a lot of people also think that. And guys, we're, we're wrong about S90V. We have to remember that S90V... Uh, is actually not, um, you know, its primary application is not as a blade on a folding knife. Its primary application has something to do with industrial food prep. Um, the actual um, best heat treat for that application is way, way lower. You should actually check out uh, what Crucible says about it. Now, when you have it as the blade of a pocket knife, it does need to be a little bit higher, considering what you would do with that. But it's not like 62 to 64. It's nothing near that. Actually, as it turns out, 59 to 61 just happens to be about the optimal range for S90V when we're looking at folding knives. Some people might disagree. I think they have a little bit of a skewed sense of what optimal is and how it changes composition to composition, especially compositions that were not originally intended as blades of a folding knife, right? It's fine. We all started somewhere. They'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> it's just like automatically suggests that I know what I'm talking about and can't be argued with. <laughs> I would just prefer that you didn't argue with me. But I was wrong about assuming that S90V should be higher. It's actually in that right zone. As far as I know, that is how they're heat treating it, but I could be wrong about that. Um, but yeah, so anyways, there's definitely a big old freaking lanyard thing on this. Jeez. <laughs> there's plenty of room for that. I don't know what, I mean, this is some sort of glass breaker, but it's too thick to unscrew a flathead. I mean, that'd take a big old fat flathead, right? And it's not thin enough to be used, uh, you know, as a scraper. Maybe there's some obvious application for this. I don't really know. I would imagine that you can put a good-sized dent in someone's face with it if that's what you do with this stuff. I don't. I don't ever find myself doing that. It's weird, right? I mean, like, in all of the human interactions that I've ever had, I've just never really needed to put a dent in somebody's face with a, the back of a knife. But, okay. You know, to that one guy who's had to do it that one time, right? With well, This one will also do that. But realistically, I mean, I would venture to guess that this will do a decent job breaking glass, right? It's just not very pointy. Um, we've got a titanium lock bar and there also is a, a steel lock bar insert. You can just barely see it right there. The screw for it is underneath, so it's hidden on this side. And it doubles as the over treble stop, which is fine. Clip uh, carry, we've talked about that. It's, it's almost shallow and the clip is just a weird shape and it has nubs underneath it, which is odd. We do have external pins, which I, I like. Well, any pin, any stop that adds another point of contact like this versus a stop pin that's just located right here because then you'd have one single point of contact, just the tang of the blade um, rounding over it usually. This has two points of contact, so you have better stability. And usually if the tolerances are good, that means better action, control, and while maintaining solid lockup and centering, which this does do. There is no blade play up, down, left, or right, no lock stick, no double clutch, no pivot lash. It's nice and smooth on the inside. And we have a well-tuned detent for you know the way that you're supposed to operate this. Can you open it with the studs? You absolutely can. They're just not textured. They're stops, right? But if you really want to use them, yeah, sure. One problem. Let's see if we can hear it. That's detent lash. Hate that. 
Is it, it, does it really cause that much of an issue functionally? No. But it's something that we don't like to see on knives that cost as much as these knives do. This is a $290 knife. There are definitely other companies out there uh, doing knives in S90V and titanium for less. I think they're starting to run into a problem. I've actually heard you know, of a couple companies saying we actually have to back away from that because it's just too expensive to do. S90V is too expensive to grind and it is more expensive um, you know, just to purchase it. So while there still might be a few companies that have some models lying around, I wouldn't surprise me if we stop seeing knives at right around the $200 territory in S90V. As of the time of this upload, I'm sure you can still find them. But I have a feeling we're going to start seeing that come back up. I don't know that for sure. I don't think 290 is bad. There's a lot of work here, right? I think 250 would have been a lot more competitive, right? So 290 is a, is a little bit stingy there for the materials. The thing that kills it for me is this detent lash. And perhaps I got a goofy one, right? There's a decent there's a decent amount of milling here. We did get a full backspacer, right? Quite a bit of material in general. It's a big knife. Nice finish. We didn't really talk about that. This tumbled finish on this is really nice. Um, and, uh, you know, some milling on the, uh, some texturing on the titanium. So they did go a little bit further than some of those examples we have out there where we've got S90V and titanium. A lot of people like to reduce it to base materials and not consider any other element. That's really lazy, uh, but that's what people are going to do, right? So that's why I say 250 would have felt a lot more competitive. 290, I realize that's 40 bucks up. Um, I think I could have choked it down if it weren't for the detent lash. So I'm not super excited about that $290 price tag, right? I think the most that I would have considered like absolutely fair is about $265 with no detent lash. Um, just being as fair as I possibly can. I actually really like the design and the ergonomics. And listen, if you get one of these with no detent lash, um, I'd, I'd like to hear what other people you know have to say down in the comments. If you get one with no detent lash, it's a really good functional tool that will surprise you you know, both in terms of the blade and just ergonomically. It's it's actually a lot more comfortable than it looks. Um, but eh, no detent lash. I don't want to be seeing that at all. And this has actually got, I mean, it's audible. You can see it, but you can also hear it. Right? Again, this, was, this doesn't cause a functional problem, but I don't like, I don't want to, uh, I bet I can get it to rattle. Hold on. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I can hear it. I just don't like that. I want everything to be solid. Locked down. It's okay. It's okay. Not my favorite thing in the whole world, and it's pretty pricey, right? Um, we'll see what happens to S90V. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe we'll continue to see knives that are priced anywhere from 180 to 225 utilizing titanium and S90V for the, until the end of time. Who knows? My guess is it's going to come up, right? So my sort of expected price point for that, especially for these hyper-competitive companies, is about $250. But I've been wrong in the past. I'll be wrong again. Um, but uh, yeah, this this one's just an, it's okay. This one's okay. Uh, that's going to be about it. Thanks again to PMP. And I, actually, I think it was Tools for Gents who sent this uh, to me. Uh, so thanks so much for doing that. Please. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.